Hello everyone, this is MJ and you are at my channel called Reading This Life. My channel is where we talk fiction, friends, and fun. Today, it's my weekly reading and challenge update. Stay tuned. get started comment down below and let me know what reads are you tackling this week I would be really interested to find out so let's catch up from last week got lots of reading done people I don't know if it's the sprints I don't know if it's just the type of books that I'm reading I don't know if it's not being on my phone as much but I got a lot done all right so we have total Five and a half. Five and a half. That's pretty good for a week for me. Now, we're going to go through them all. These are not chunks. Maybe one of them is chunky, um, two, um, but the rest are more shorter books, novellas. So calm down, calm down. We're, we're going to get through this. Okay. So the first book that I finished, I started it last week and we talked about it, um, is The Glass Menagerie by... Tennessee Williams. Do you say menagerie? Is it menagerie? 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 Uh, this was covered in high school for a lot of people. Um, there was a conversation going around in the comments on booktube about people covering this and not really remembering anything. And it's, it's pretty much was the same with me. Very, very interesting to read a play. Interesting that uh, one subscriber, Troy, I see you, was in the play and he had a little mishap. Uh, but really, really cool to hear people's thoughts when this kind of went through the memory. So The Glass Menagerie was the first book that I finished because I started it when we did this video last week. So let's get into Goodreads and see what I gave it. I gave The Glass Menagerie four out of five stars, especially for that retro vibe. Okay, so after that, we jumped right into Artificial Condition by Martha Wells. This is the second book in the Murderbot series, sci-fi series. Um, it's about a robot that um, pretty much wakes up um, from his programming and uh, is going rogue. So book number two, I enjoyed, if not as much, maybe a little bit more than book number one. Murderbot's personality is just a complete vibe. He does not give an F. Um, he's trying to blend in with augmented humans. He is trying to not get caught. And his personality just shines through in this book. Um, I love the detail. I love the imagery, the story building. Um, there's a, quite a cast of characters. I believe there's an introduction of a sex bot, if I remember correctly. But just funny. Funny, funny, funny. Um, he loves streaming television shows. Um, he just, he, he's, he's almost like a person. Um, but his intentions are to um, do rogue and naughty things. But that was a trip. Now... The Martha Wells books, well, I'll, I'll get into that when we get to the next one, but that was an audio book and that was three hours long. They're short. They're short, but they're jam packed. And the actor that they have doing the narration just has this dry sense of humor, this voice that just encapsulates, I think, what Murderbot would really sound like. So Murderbot is definitely a favorite character of mine. So we did that. Next we did a non-please, that's anonymous please, that is the trendy book published by Dumois. Um, there was a co-writer with this book and basically it is the story of Dumois and how it came to be. Very Devil Wears Prada. Um, the protagonist is Cricket. Cricket works, works for a stylist. She gets know if she got drunk one night I don't know she had a blow up at work got drunk one night started dropping some tea on Instagram on an old styling account that she had all of a sudden it starts blowing up within a few months she has a million followers 
and no one knows who Dumois is. Um, no one knows who, the, who this person is. There are, um, you know, there's an investigative reporter that's involved. I love fashion. So if you love fashion and a little bit of gossip, you will love, you will love uh, Anonymous, please. I read this primarily last weekend. Uh, this is a library book and I finished it in like three, over the course of three days. And there is a little bit of a love story. There's a little bit of adventure with jet setting. There's a lot of fashion. So if you were looking for a Gossip Girl, Devil Wears Prada palette cleanser, this could be the read for you. I was gonna give it five stars, but I gave it four out of five. And I think just because we still don't know who she is. <laughs> but I had fun reading it. I will say that. I had a lot of fun reading it. So that was Dumois. And then, okay, so then we got into Murderbot number three, which is Rogue Protocol. This is the third installment in the Murderbot series by Martha Wells. Um, this was another audiobook, and again, around three and a half hours long. I enjoyed it. I love Murderbot's personality. It carried over. Same narrator, some of the same uh, characters, um, a little bit of a different mission, a little more violence, but it didn't grip me as much as Murderbot 1 and 2. So I gave that three out of five stars. Then I moved on to Odd Thomas, which is the deeply odd. That's, odd Thomas is a series by Dean Coots, and there are seven books in the series. Now here's my story, here's my history with Odd Thomas. Back in 2015, my best friend was reading them, I was reading them. Um, she told me about them and I just went to town. I read one, two, three, four, five, and then six I picked up and I put it back down and I haven't touched it since 2015. That's what my grid reads told me. So, um, Ollie from Criminali is reading them for something or other. And, um, I said, let me know when you get on book number six, that'll give me the push to, to continue on. So he did, and I started it. Um, and I did the audiobook, and it's the same. It's the same. Odd Thomas is a fry cook and he sees ghosts and, um, he has, a girlfriend that is dead. Um, there's, you know, these ghosts that kind of are sidekicks with him in this, um, in this book, it's Alfred Hitchcock. Previously it was Elvis. Um, I think Frank Sinatra may have been one in the past, but it's the same spiel, the same stories. There's a cult involved and there's children and there's a bad guy and the bad guy is called the rhinestone cowboy. I mean, if you can't, you can't, I mean, can you read these standalone? I'm sure you can. Um, but it was just the redundancy of it all. I thought that the plot stalled. You kind of know how it's going to end. And it's just, it's just, it's just not for me. Um, I think I gave it three out of five stars. This is how, this is how bad the audiobook was. So I normally listen to audiobooks one at, you know, normal rate or maybe 1.2%. I had the sucker on 1.5% and it sounded normal. So it's just drawn out and just talking about different things. And I'm like, get to the point, get to the plot, get to the action. The action is always like the last quarter of an Odd Thomas book. And then you have the buildup. Um, the bad guy in this was interesting. The rhinestone cowboy. Um, the cult was fine. We've seen something like this in the past in the Odd Thomas books just not my cup of tea. So that's pretty much why I put it down in 2015 and picked it up um, so many years later. There's one more book in the series. I'm going to finish it just because I could say that I finished the series. I don't think I ever finished the series before. So this is going to be it. Then, ooh, this was a good one. Sour Candy. Sour Candy was really, really good. Okay. So let me tell you let me tell you how I got the Odd Thomas book. Okay, so the Odd Thomas audiobook, I couldn't find to save my life. 
looking, 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 looking. No libraries had it. Um, I didn't want to pay Audible for it. I didn't want to buy it. I just wanted to listen to it. So what I did was I opened up a Scribd account. Have you done Scribd? Do you know about Scribd? Scribd is pretty awesome. So Scribd has 30 days for free. You get to listen to everything, read everything. They have eBooks and audiobooks. They have PDFs. They have podcasts. They have all this stuff. So I signed up for an account and I got 30 days for free. They have all the Autonomous books. Okay. So um, Autonomous number six, I was able to read on it. And Autonomous number seven, the last one, which is St. Odd, I will be able to read on it. So I'm going through and I'm putting in books that I've been interested in reading, specifically ones that were mentioned by other booktubers, ones that I have listed on my Amazon wish list. And I'm going through to see if there's any available in this script. I said to myself, I am still compliant with the challenge because I'm not buying any books. It's free. After 30 days, totally different story. But for right now, it's free. So why not look for all of the books that I want to read, try and read them while I have access to them. It makes sense, right? Okay. So I'm going through and I, I just put in horror and I said, okay, show me what you got in horror. They have quite a bit. So Sour Candy is a book that I was really, really interested in reading basically just because the cover gripped me. Um, and it, it kind of just leaves that impression on you. So Sour Candy is by uh, Keelan Patrick Burke. The story is very interesting. This is more of a novella. It's about a hundred and some pages. And, um, you know, a man goes to Walmart and there is a child that is screaming and, um, there's an accident that happens. And all of a sudden the child is in the guy's house and people are saying that it's his kid. The guy doesn't have any kids. What the heck's going on? Fascinating lovely. I was intrigued. It held my attention. I couldn't wait to see how it was going to end. I loved this book. I gave it five out of five stars. Easy on the horror bits. Um, very palatable, very tolerable for somebody that is just looking to creep into a little bit of horror, but I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I gave it five out of five stars and that was Sour Candy. So then that's it. Okay. So sour candy was the last thing that I completed. Then another book that I'm interested in reading is called the story of the eye. And this is from 1928. And this is under the disturbing books category, that transgressive fiction. And like I said, it was written in 1928 and it is it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to categorize it yet, but, uh, it's on Scribd, So I'm able to read it. Um, it is a penguin classic. So there is some type of, there's some type of merit to it. I'm not sure where it's at yet, but we'll see. We'll see when we get there. So that I will be finishing. So let's look at our tallies. Okay. So, so far for the read what you own challenge, I got hung up people because of all of these books, library books now scribbed. I've also had library holds come in and we're going to talk about those and what I'm going to be reading next. So right now as my challenge for the read what you own challenge, the challenge stands at 19 books read out of 51. Okay. So the January challenge for the get off your phone challenge as of today is at 13 out of 20. So we're 13 out of 20. That's 13 out of 76 goal for the year, which is pretty good. And the reason why I'm at 13 is simply because short audiobooks, short novellas, mix them in with longer books. It's okay. It's good. It's good. So the read what you won't challenge is going to take me longer because all of these damn library holds are coming through. All right. So we have holds that came through a visit from the goon squad by Jennifer Egan. Brian from bookish talked about this. As soon as he was talking about it, I put a hold on it. 
Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukovka. No idea where I heard about this book. Put a hold on it. It came through. The other one that came through is Spare, the person formerly known as Prince Harry. <laughs> uh, his audiobook came through, and I really, really, really want to listen to it because he is narrating it. So those three library books are next on deck. I haven't gotten to this little guy yet because I feel guilty because these library holds came through and I don't have, I don't have a ton of time with them. Some library holds that come through, I only get 13 days. So I try to move those to the top. Um, and then we'll see what happens. This doesn't count for a read what you own challenge because it was a gift. So it would just count as a book that I read. So yet again, I didn't get to it this week, but hopefully in the next upcoming week, I will, hopefully. So we'll see, we'll see what's happening. Okay, so my reading for this month, I feel like I'm in a good place. Can I reach my goal of 20 books in January? Yes. We have quite a number of days left in the month. I know I can do it. It's just finding the right book for the right time. So that's where we are. Um, so let's see, we've got, we talked about Scribd, we talked about library holds, we talked about the challenges, the get off your phone challenge. The reason why I'm able to read so many books is because I no longer have Instagram for my booktube channel. Uh, and my phone tells me that within the last week, I went down in use another 4%, which is fantastic. Um, I do have a lot more time for reading. I am making time for reading. That is one of the things that I aspire to every day is when I wake up super duper early, um, I read. I spend a good hour, hour and a half, sometimes three hours in the morning before I have to get ready. Uh, and I will read and trust me, I am tired by the end of the night, but I get good quality time in reading. Um, I read it, it well, I listen to audiobooks in my car and I read, um, books during lunch. So that's how I'm getting it done. <laughs> and I love it. January is like one of my favorite months to get a ton of reading done just because you're hunkered down. We had a snowstorm today. Nobody would when nobody was really going anywhere. You know, it was just nice to not have to rush. I mean, get, just get to enjoy um, the stillness of winter. Okay, so what I have on deck this week is um, tonight finish the story of the eye. Then move into St. Odd, which is the last book in the Odd Thomas series. Then we are going to a visit from the Goon Squad. Notes on an execution. And I think we're going to pause there and see where we're at. So that would be... Oh, and Prince Harry. So all of those would just count for the month and not what I own. I know. I know. I should be picking books that I own, but I want to utilize this Scribd account as much as I can within 30 days. So if there are books that I want to read, I'm going to read them because they're not costing me any money. So that is my justification. Right? Right. Okay. And that's okay. It's okay if I'm not buying books. I'll tell you what, the struggle was real today though. Because what I do is if I see a book, I put it in my wish list and then I'll go on eBay and see if there's any copies. And if I see copies, I'll put a heart next to it just so I can find them later. Well, sellers are giving me deals <laughs> and I can't buy them. It sucks. I can't buy them. What are you going to do? All right. So that's where our reading is. Whew. Feel like it was a workout this week, right? Reading workout. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. That's it here for me. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you are remaining safe. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself so you can take care of others. And I will see you in my next video, whether it be sooner or later. So until next time, everyone, goodbye for now.